hi guys welcome back to my channel um today in this video i'm gonna be um doing my makeup it's gonna be like a get ready with me story time kind of deal um i'm gonna be talking about the surgery that i had done that everyone's been asking about but i haven't been telling because i've been waiting for this video to come out honestly i was waiting to lose a little bit of weight before i actually put the videos out because i was like i don't want to get the surgery and then not lose any weight <laughs> Um, but I feel great. I feel happy. The surgery that I had was a vertical gastric sleeve and, um, I'm going to be talking about why I did it, how I did it, when I did it, um, and the good and the bad and the ugly. Um, I am going to be posting a video of like the vlog style of when, like the day of surgery, like I vlogged everything. Um, and that'll be posted soon but today's gonna be a get ready with me because i haven't done my makeup in a while because we're all in quarantine um so i should have quite a bit of views on this video hopefully because i know there's gonna be a lot of cheese muscles and a lot of people who are bored as fuck because they're just sitting at home wondering what to do so without further ado let's get right into the video <sighs> all right so i'm gonna start off with doing a little bit of everything just so i can talk i don't know if i'm going to explain what i'm doing i guess i will do a little bit of both but it'll be more of a story time kind of deal um for my moisturizer i'm doing um an elf hydrating lotion so the reason why i decided to go for surgery was because i I've always struggled with weight, right? I've been able to lose about 30 pounds, um, and my healthiest weight was 180, and that's when I was playing roller derby. I think I was 180, and then I lost weight to 150. So my lowest weight was about 150, um, and that was like my healthiest weight. Again, that was in high school. I was still growing, becoming a woman. This is just a Mario Badescu um, lip balm. Um, so I was still becoming a woman and all that jazz. I've always been big breasted. And initially when I went to the doctor a while back, I went because I wanted to get a breast reduction. Um, I have really bad back problems. My feet were always hurting because obviously when you have so much weight on your body, you know, your feet can't really take that much. So when I went to the doctor, we talked about it and he said, look, I'm going to be honest with you. If we take your boobies off, they're going to grow back um, because it's fat. And if you're not changing your lifestyle, if you're not losing weight, you know, all of that's just going to grow back. So it's basically going to go to waste when you have kids, they're going to grow back and all that jazz. So... I, if I can't breathe right now, it's because I have a faja on, you know, trying to get snatched. Um, so then I was like, cool, fuck me, I guess, right? What are we going to do? I'm going to be fat forever with big tits. I had always tried, um, losing weight, obviously. Um, but things were just never working. I was never losing weight consistently. I would lose like five pounds and then after that I would kind of give up because I wanted to see results faster and that wasn't happening. So it was a big discouragement. Um, also, I fucking love food. It, and, um, you know, it's hard. I'm a big stress eater. After this whole process, I had no idea how much of a stress eater I was. Um, so whatever, going back to the doctor and then I was like, cool, so what are my options? Like, uh, what are we going to do? And he was like, well, there is always the option of bariatric surgery. And bariatric surgery is kind of like the surgery in general. So you can get a lap band, you can get a gastric bypass, or you can get a gastric sleeve. I got the gastric sleeve. Um, and eventually me and uh, my husband, we do want to have kids. So, you know. I didn't want to be 300 pounds plus pregnant you know what I mean like that's just beyond not healthy and not normal so he recommended that surgery to me 
and I hadn't thought about it in a while but the first time I had considered like wanting to get that surgery was legit when I was like 10 years old I found out that you could have a surgery a stomach staple basically to make your stomach smaller and you could be skinny I knew that it wasn't just gonna make you skinny I knew what it did like it makes your stomach smaller but you have to work with it um, I knew it wasn't just like a magic transformation so after that I thought about it and I was like you know what I think I'm gonna do it um, I never had insurance ever in my life until I started working for the company that I'm working for now and I work for a really great company and I absolutely love my job um, they're taking care of full-time employees uh, right now that we are in this crisis of the COVID-19 of 2020 and uh, so I looked into it I, I started talking to, to different surgeons and stuff and I found a really cool badass surgeon um, and he was like cool let's do it like when I you know when I met up with him for the first time he was like let's fucking do it like I think that'll be perfect uh, your titties will shrink the rest of your body will shrink and you'll be overall healthy um, getting this surgery solves a lot of medical problems if you have diabetes it can potentially get rid of your type 2 diabetes if you have back pain if you have feet pain if you have joint pain all of that can be due to obesity um, so high blood pressure a lot of stuff mind you I didn't have thankfully I didn't have any other problems other than the back pain due to all the weight I was carrying on the top so I ended up talking to the surgeon and he was like yeah dude let's do it let's uh, get you on the process and we'll get on with it he um, like the same day I think I found out that, that my insurance was gonna cover it <clears throat> and with that it turns out that some insurances can take up to a year like they really want to make sure that you're committed to it and that you're not just going to do it to do it like it is a life-changing experience and if you're not mentally prepared for it it will fucking destroy you um and with that being said some insurances they make you do sleep studies they make you do a uh, heart exams i had a heart exam i think um but some insurances are just so extensive and he was like your process is only a month i was expecting to wait about a year before i got my surgery done so this shit started going down really quickly um my appointments were like back to back like they really wanted to get me in and out and on with my new life and i was really fucking excited so a couple weeks later i met with the nutritionist and she started putting me on this pre-op diet and a lot of people think like, oh, you have to lose weight to like before you get the surgery. You don't necessarily have to lose weight. If you if your body naturally doesn't lose weight with the plan that they give you, then that's fine. You know what I mean? You just can't gain any weight. It's impossible to gain weight while you're on that diet because if you're following the diet, you're not going to gain weight. You're going to lose weight. That diet was hard at the beginning. Uh, just like anything else, you know, you have to get accustomed to it. It was basically keto. Um, the only thing that got me was the no fruit part. I'm Mexican. I love fruit. I love mango. I love chamoy. I love all that stuff. And it was pretty hard to not eat any of that. But even now, doing keto, it's not a, it's not an issue for me. Um, I'll get into the issues later. I'm using this palette, by the way, for my entire eyeshadow look. So I meet with the nutritionist, she's telling me how to start eating, um, you know, do portion control, um, re meal replacements with protein. Protein is a big, big, big part of bariatric surgery. They really want to make sure that you're getting your protein in there because you can't really fit anything inside your new stomach whenever you get it done. So, you know, they're training, they're, you're basically training your body on how to eat afterwards. And it really does work. Um, and they do it, I had to do it for about three weeks I was dieting. Um, and I did lose quite a bit of weight and I'll post, I'll post my before and after on dieting before surgery. That's this photo right here. Um, make sure that you take photos. If you're really going to do this, you have to take photos. 
because if you don't you're not gonna realize that you're losing weight i don't weigh myself um and the reason i don't do that is because i don't want to get discouraged i don't want to see the number and be like fuck i only lost like two pounds this week or i didn't lose anything this week you know what i mean like your body's different everybody's body's different everybody's experience is different um so a good tip would be to like just take pictures and don't weigh yourself um the times i weigh myself are whenever there is a scale in public available to me or if i go to the doctor for a doctor's visit i will weigh myself there and i'm shook because i am losing weight um without even like working out or anything but i've been at the weight that i am right now for a good while and i'm barely starting to work out because i finally feel like fully capable of working out i know some people work out like a week after everybody's body's different i wanted my stomach to fully heal before i could move around and stuff and i totally sidetracked between what i was saying so i started seeing a nutritionist things were getting uh you know the ball was getting rolling and then um they scheduled my um emmy video ekg video i don't know what it's called but they scheduled that video i had to be under anesthesia for that and they shove a camera down your throat and that's to make sure that there's no underlying um situations going on like there's no like hernias there's no underlying issues before they have to go in there and take your stomach out that was scary because i hadn't been under anesthesia in a long time and it can be very scary if you've never been under anesthesia and i did film all of that that video will be up very soon um i already have it edited i just wanted to get this video out first um so that happened and then about a week later i think or a couple weeks later i um had my actual surgery scheduled and that was scheduled for february 20th of 2020 and today is march something 2020 so i'm about a month post-op and um you know between all of this time i'm still dieting still doing keto still losing weight i feel i started feeling great about myself because i started noticing that my clothes were fitting smaller and whatnot um and i feel felt like my life wasn't going to start until I got that surgery done. I told some of my clients about it, my my regulars, and they're like very excited for me. Everyone was very supportive. There was a couple people that were, I could feel that they were almost jealous. And they would talk shit and be like, oh, you're on a diet? I'm not. And like eat bread in front of me. And at first it was getting to me, but then I realized, you know what, bitch? at the end of the day you're gonna be the one that's fat <laughs> and like it may not show now but you know if you stay strong and and stick to your diet and all that stuff you will lose the weight even if you're not working out and even if you feel like you're not losing weight you're losing weight with this thing even if you're not doing the surgery like you still lose weight this was before i got the surgery i was losing a bunch of weight because i start i no tea no soda no um carbs nothing and i'm gonna make a separate video on about the diet and like what consisted of it um so, so there were some haters out there and i feel like there still are some haters and you know they're like metiches and they want to see what you're doing about your like what's going on in your life um but they just want to know to be like cheese muscles they don't they don't want to know because they care about you i'm doing this video for the people that have been messaging me and the people that i see that genuinely care and genuinely want to get this done so i hope that these videos help you out and i'm still sidetracking this video is going to be a whole bunch of sidetracking all right so surgery day comes i filmed my entire surgery and recovery as well um surgery day comes and it's like you know you're going into surgery you can't eat 24 hours before i mean uh not 24 hours 12 hours before i think or six I don't fucking remember you can't eat the day before and uh, three days before surgery you're on a liquid diet so that means all liquids no solid food you're having protein shakes you're having water you're having soup you're having nothing but liquid clear liquids 
Um, I go into surgery and of course, like always, no one can find my motherfucking veins. So they take a really long time trying to put the IV in and of course for surgery and for everything you need an IV site so that they can be changing out your medications. That's the part that I dreaded the most honestly. I didn't even care about the going under at this point. I just dreaded the IV because they shove the needle in me. And since they can't find it, they shove it in and they wiggle it and they poke deeper and wiggle it and poke deeper in hopes that they can find my vein. And I'm like, homie, you ain't gonna find it. There ain't no vein there. Like, I've done this before. So it takes about three nurses and 30 minutes to finally figure out where my vein is at. They put it in. I'm good to go. They uh, started my surgery, I think, around 8.30 a.m., um, we got there at 5 in the morning and um, the first thing I remember that was like getting serious was that the nurse came in and she was like cool I'm gonna start giving you your margarita and what they meant by that was like they were gonna start sedating me so she put something in to kind of like chill me out because you know going into deep anesthesia I guess is like it's very scary so thank God she came in and she's like, I'm gonna give you your margarita. And that's in the video too. As soon as she put whatever she put in my IV, I was like, oh God, like you just feel high and drunk at the same time. And you're like ready to fucking party. Um, and that was fun. <laughs> but then um, I remember her like wheeling me out and going through the hallways and stuff. And I'm like, fuck, this is getting serious. And you can see all of this in the footage. Um, and I go into surgery. I remember them moving me onto the table, onto like the surgery table. And after that, I don't remember shit. They went over like, this is patient Carla uh, Hoffman and we're gonna be doing this and she's not allergic to these medications. And then after that, it was like the briefing, like after the briefing of the surgery room, um, I fucking knocked the fuck out and I don't remember anything until I woke up in like the recovery room like later on there's even footage of me talking to my mom and I don't remember any of that I do remember at one point I I was out like I was um I was still very heavily sedated like I was coming out of it and I was in the recovery room and I remember uh telling the nurse my I, I was asleep my eyes were still closed and I just remember saying it out loud and I was like fuck somebody fucking help me because I felt like I was gonna vomit like a rowdy vomit it wasn't like no drunk hangover vomit it was like i'm gonna die vomit and this was after surgery so i remember leaning over the bed because i was like fuck i'm gonna vomit and i like with my eyes closed i was like i'm gonna vomit i'm gonna vomit and i'm just like telling someone to come and help me and i hear nurses like i don't know who it was and if y'all are watching this video thank you for saving me <laughs> um but the nurses, they ran over, they put something in my IV and instantly it went away. I didn't feel like throwing up anymore. And that was the best fucking feeling ever. Like going from I'm dying, I'm dying, help to like, oh, I'm not dying. I feel okay. So after that, I fucking fell asleep again and I didn't wake up until later. And I remember when I woke up, I was in a lot of pain. Uh, I, I watched everybody's videos and... You know, everyone was talking about this gas pain and I was like, I didn't know what to expect. No one knows what to expect. As, as many videos as you watch, you're like, you know, you try to prepare yourself. You try to read everything and try to figure out what's going to happen and stuff. But you're truly never going to be prepared until you experience it. Um, so I felt this gas pain and like nausea and just like overall soreness. I felt like I got hit by a fucking bus is like the perfect description of it and i they kept telling me like you need to drink water you need to drink water you need to start being hydrated and blah 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 um i couldn't fucking drink water i couldn't stand up i couldn't get up i needed to go pee um and they're like you got to start walking a big thing after surgery is that you have to walk because it's going to alleviate the gas pain um, I was walking and I was, like I said, the day that I got released, I thought I was good because I was able to walk and I was like, cool, I got this. So I was wrong. I was very wrong. 
um they had me drinking water out of little medicine cups like the little like liquid children's tylenol um and even that was way too much for me i wasn't able to keep any of that down i couldn't like i was able to have popsicles and that was the only thing um but when they released me i wasn't able to have popsicles i wasn't able to have water i got dehydrated and they said that that's the biggest thing that people come back and get readmitted for is because they get dehydrated um but that shit sucked it felt like i was dying and i wanted to be hooked up to an iv again i wanted to be back in the hospital where they knew what was wrong with me and they could fix me and i was experiencing a lot of pain in my stomach and it was just hell and while i was in the hospital i felt anxiety like i never felt anxiety before i felt restless i wanted to go home i i just just talking about it is giving me anxiety honestly like it was so bad um because you feel like you're stuck there forever like you feel like it's never gonna end and you're like fuck when am i gonna feel normal again and at one point i literally questioned myself and i was like why the fuck did i do this like why did i do this to my body i was fine the way i was i could have lost weight i could have lost the weight on my own like i don't know why the fuck i did this like i hate everybody and everything right now um and i felt like that for a good while honestly uh like the first week i regretted everything and i was messaging my friend and i was like dude like i have no idea why the fuck i did this like i hate this i hate the way i feel i want to feel normal i fucking want to kill myself like this sucks not literally i didn't want to kill myself but i was like why the fuck did i do this like really i ruined my life because i thought i was gonna feel like that forever so i was in the hospital for like another three days i think and that shit sucked because it was the same thing on repeat i had to get up and walk every every hour they're making me walk um and if you wouldn't walk they would come in and they would hook you up to these like little leg cuffs and i fucking hated those leg cuffs so i basically had to deal with the nurses like hey if i get up every 30 minutes i mean uh, every hour and walk um for like, at least like 10 minutes um don't hook me up to these things you do have to get hooked up at night though which sucks um i hated it just because like it would make my feet like tingle and like go numb but it's so that you prevent blood clots from happening um it was like clockwork dude like in the middle of the night people were coming in and giving you like they were giving me like asthma medication and like i had to blow on this little air thingy um to make sure that i wasn't gonna get pneumonia somehow you're at risk of pneumonia after that surgery um and that shit was annoying because you can't fully go to sleep you're you're uncomfortable you just want to be in your own bed and they wake you up at six in the morning doctor comes in and he's like how you feeling and if you're not feeling good you stay another day and you're not gonna see him until the next day which sucks um so yeah i was in the hospital for three days on the third day i arose and i took my ass home and that time i really was feeling better um, for me i always want to do stuff so it's hard for me to stay in bed and i think that was the biggest struggle is that i wanted to go do stuff i wanted to feel normal but i couldn't because i was like fucking healing my stomach just got taken out it was really hard to eat anything um you're on a liquid diet afterwards and you kind of can't fit shit in your stomach afterwards like i couldn't even have like gatorade like i said i couldn't have popsicles um while i was recovering popsicles were my best friend because i was able to I felt like I was able to chew something and I felt like it was able to go down properly. Um, Gatorade, I got tired of Gatorade real fucking fast. Chicken broth, got tired of chicken broth real fast. Like, it's disgusting. The things that they make you eat are disgusting. But after you're healed and you're ready to go, it feels normal. Like, you're, you're used to your new diet. You're used to your new like lifestyle and like how much you can eat um the trippy part now after i recovered um i feel like i'm pretty much 100 percent recovered with this surgery i still have a little scar on my tummy um the biggest scar obviously is where they took out um your stomach from and i'll show you guys in a bit i have pictures um so here you can see that i have five scars on my stomach i have one under my titty 
the biggest one in the photo is where they took out my stomach so um oh also what i forgot to to talk about was i got an allergic reaction to the glue from the from the surgery like whenever they put the incisions on you i got an allergic reaction my stomach was fucking on fire dude like every incision was swollen and like puffy and oh my god the the itchiness was unbearable um i had to go to walgreens i knew it was an allergic reaction to the glue i fucking knew it um uh, but i had to go to walgreens and i had to buy um hydrocortisone i think it was hydrocortisone it had some cooling effect on it and man that bitch felt good like that helped big time um and they called me from the hospital like way later to give me like a week checkup or whatever and they're like hey how are you doing what's up your appointment is in a couple days but we just wanted to check up on you and make sure that everything was all right and I was like, yeah, dude, turns out my stomach is fucking itchy. Like, is that normal? And then they were like, yeah, you probably had an allergic reaction to the glue. Like, it's totally normal. And I was like, great. I'm glad no one told me about this. That was fucking shitty. Well, the first two weeks after surgery, um, this also depends on your doctor. But my doctor wanted to wait two weeks after surgery on just liquids. And then another two weeks on mushy food. And now I'm on complete solid food. Um i did accidentally cheat in advance because on the second week i just started eating things that were comfortable for me obviously they were all soft but i honestly don't remember like keeping track of the days because when i was keeping track i was going insane i was like every day is dragging i want to chew something i want to eat something like i wasn't even hungry you're not hungry after surgery you don't feel hungry um now a month out I do get hungry and when I get hungry I'm like fuck I need to eat right now or I'm gonna kill someone like you get so fucking hungry but whenever you eat you already know like your body you'll know you'll start to get used to your stomach and you'll be like okay cool you serve yourself I've been serving myself the amount that I know that I can eat for breakfast today I had a piece of brisket that was like that big and that filled me up brisket and then cheese on top it was fucking delicious i'm going back on keto um i was eating like shit with all this um covid stuff i was stress eating um i was eating chips because chips fit perfectly in your stomach popcorn chips fries mashed potatoes all that stuff fits perfectly into your stomach but you're not going to lose any weight because it's still it's carbs you're not supposed to have carbs in your stomach you know what i mean so it's going back to that whole diet thing like you're you need to change you really need to change the way you eat and stuff in order for this stuff to work um but i know what i'm doing wrong and i know why i'm not losing weight um faster than other people are um but i'm not worried about it because i know i can change it back up and i know why once you know the issue like it's very easy to get back on track so yeah that was the thing you you feel like you want to eat you see food and you want to fucking eat it i love food i love eating you cannot eat it no matter how much you want to eat like even if you want to shovel that whole plate in there it ain't gonna fit sis and you're gonna feel sick as fuck um also the fucking vitamins that they gave me these vitamins are huge and right now i've been taking um chewy vitamins because i still cannot swallow a full vitamin uh i got my wisdom teeth taken out a couple days ago and I couldn't take a pain medication. I had to take children's Tylenol because that pill was not going to... I can't swallow pills. My, my uh, stomach rejects them. And you'll find that out too. Like once you start eating um, like solid food or honestly when you're in your liquids too. Your stomach is brand new. And as you're reintroducing um, the foods into your stomach um some foods that you put in there your, your stomach's gonna be like nah sis I don't, I don't i don't want this in me your stomach will select the food item that it did not like and you'll throw it up 
the other day I tried taking my um my pill my vitamin that I've been supposed to having to take but I I can't my body just doesn't want it in there I smell it and I gag and like I told my nutritionist I was like dude I literally cannot take this pill and she was like well just try you have to try and blah 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 and I was like bitch my body does not want this pill inside it's inside like it's just not gonna happen I'm not making this shit up so I tried it again and the same shit happened I had it with my meal the way I'm supposed to and like 30 seconds later I felt that like heat wave from the top of my body all the way to my toes and I just had to get up and it was it's the nasty I hate throwing up it's the nastiest feeling like your whole body is just like a whole like workout I feel like a cat like ugh, this is gonna be hard to do because I can't do mascara and talk at the same time um but yeah so I took that pill and very quickly my body will reject it and if I have it with the full meal um, I won't throw up the meal I will only throw up the pill and um, like I said whenever your body when you eat something that you don't like well if you eat something that you thought you used to like um, you put it in your stomach and your body doesn't like it it will regurgitate just that item um, I used to eat ham and egg all the time and recently when I have ham and egg um, I can't eat the ham anymore I can still have egg but my body will separate the ham and the egg and throw up just the ham which is fucking trippy like it's crazy how your body does that it's crazy how your body works before surgery I kind of didn't care what the fuck I put in my body um, I will put I would eat like shit I would have ice cream in bed I would have pizza in bed I would like have pizza for a whole week and I wouldn't care but now that you have this surgery you can feel your body speaks to you more or the surgery I don't know what it is about the surgery but it teaches you to listen to your body you can I can now like feel when I'm hungry my stomach will tell me like bitch put some food inside of me and the crazy thing is when I'm not stressed and like when I'm just going about my day I will literally feel hunger in my stomach so I know when it's time to eat and I don't want to put anything bad in it. I want to make sure that I'm, you know, you can't, you can't be snacking throughout the day. You can't be eating the same portions that you used to. So when your stomach is hungry and when you're able to put food inside of it, you want to put the best food that you possibly can in there. And your nutritionist tells you that. I'm making a video. It's real trippy and it's real hippie. <sighs> like right now, I just took a sip of that lemonade and it is not sitting well in my stomach. Um, you'll feel that with drinks too. You'll feel, oh fuck, <laughs> they don't go up. That is not okay. Oh. You just feel like hot. And this is the only shitty thing about the surgery is that your food just sometimes does not want to sit well with you. I gotta take a sip. So I finished the rest of my makeup and hair off camera because this video was getting a little too long. Um, but this is the finished look. I got these extensions from the beauty supply and they were half off bitch so i got them for 40 dollars they were already 80 dollars which is really cheap they're pretty thin but if i go buy another pack that was only 80 dollars instead of like fucking 300 dollars which is what you bitches pay for that's a lot of money um but yeah thank you guys so much for watching this video um like i said in the beginning of the video if you made it this far thank you so much um by now you should be subscribed and like this video and share it with your friends um leave a little comment if you're gonna get the surgery if you think about getting the surgery um but yeah thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video stay tuned